Hi, I'm Rachel Bristol, Executive Director and CEO at Oregon Food Bank. First, I want to say thank you to all of the volunteers and staff out at the 920 plus organizations that make up the Oregon Food Bank Network. Your efforts are critical to meeting a growing need and fulfilling Oregon Food Bank's mission to eliminate hunger and its root causes. In these times of daily food recalls, it's more important than ever that we're all up to speed on the latest food safety regulations and best practices. Thanks to a generous grant from the Fred Meyer Foundation, we've put together this short video to bring you the most current information to help you protect the health of our neighbors in need. Thanks again for all you do. Food safety is an incredibly important part of my job. At every step in the flow of food, we as food handlers have to take care not to contaminate the food that we're working with. Good personal hygiene is a critical way to prevent our clients from getting a foodborne illness. Let's start by talking about some of the basic practices we can use in our everyday routine. While it may seem obvious, many food handlers fail to wash their hands properly or as often as needed. Hand washing is the most important thing you can do to protect you and your clients from a foodborne illness. When washing your hands, first, wet your hands with running water as hot as you can comfortably stand. Next, apply soap and vigorously scrub your hands and wrists. Then rinse. Next, reapply soap and scrub again. Then rinse your hands thoroughly under running water. Finally, dry your hands with a single-use paper towel and use a paper towel to turn off the faucet. The entire process should take 20 seconds. When in a restroom, use a paper towel to open the door and make sure to wash your hands again upon re-entering the work area. Food handlers must wash their hands before they start work and after using the restroom, touching the face, hair, or body, smoking, eating, drinking, or chewing tobacco, taking out the garbage, handling chemicals, or touching anything else that may contaminate hands, such as unsanitized equipment, work surfaces, or washcloths. Remember to also wash your hands before putting on gloves. Gloves should always be worn when repackaging food. Food handlers should change their gloves as soon as they become dirty or torn before beginning a different task at least every four hours during continual use after handling raw meat and before handling cooked or ready to eat food. Jewelry should be removed prior to working with food or when working around food preparation areas. Also, we need to take care of our hands to make sure that they won't transfer germs to our client's food. We can do this by keeping our fingernails short and clean. Long fingernails can be difficult to keep clean. Also by not wearing false fingernails or nail polish. They can also be difficult to clean and can disguise dirt. Also, they can break or flake off into food. If you're going to wear either, you should always wear a single-use disposable glove. If you have an infected cut or wound, you should not work with food. Cuts or wounds that are not infected should be covered with a band-aid and a disposable glove. Now let's talk about what to do if you're not feeling well. We have to be extremely careful not to spread our germs to our clients or our coworkers. So if you're feeling sick, it's best just to stay at home especially if you're experiencing symptoms such as vomiting or diarrhea. If a volunteer or worker has been diagnosed with any of the following foodborne illnesses, he or she should not return to work until they've obtained a written release from a doctor. Salmonella typhi, Shigella, E. coli, hepatitis A, and norovirus. Sanitary facilities and equipment are another essential part of maintaining food safety. If you don't keep your facility and your equipment clean and sanitary, food can easily become contaminated. To be effective, this must be a three-step process. Surfaces must first be washed and then rinsed before being sanitized. Everything in your operation must be kept clean, but any surface that comes into contact with food must be cleaned, rinsed, and sanitized. A good general rule to have for your operation is that all food contact surfaces must be washed, rinsed, and sanitized after each use, anytime you begin working with another type of food, 
Anytime you are interrupted during a task and the tools or items you are working with may have become contaminated. And at four hour intervals if the items are in constant use. Sanitizing solution can be made using one teaspoon of bleach for every gallon of water. Water should not be hot and extra care should be taken to make sure this ratio is used. Any more than one teaspoon of bleach per gallon of water could be dangerous, and any less would be ineffective. As a reminder, cleaning solutions and chemicals should be stored separately from food. Keeping your establishment clean and sanitary will also keep pests from spreading throughout your facility. Careful cleaning eliminates the pest food supply, destroys insect eggs, and reduces the number of places pests can take shelter. Good practices include keeping garbage containers that are washable and covered, disposing of garbage quickly and properly. This includes cleaning up food and beverage spills immediately, and keeping food at least four inches off of the floor. Even with these practices in place, pests can still get into your facility. That's why it's crucial to have an ongoing system of pest control. This should include traps being set and checked on a regular basis or a routine visit from a licensed pest control operator. Do not use any type of pesticide baits or poisons in your facility before consulting a licensed pest control operator. Receiving. There are a few things to remember when receiving food into your establishment. First, Make sure to have some time set aside to inspect any food items coming into the pantry. Check that there are no signs of insects or rodents. Also, make sure that packaging is intact and there are no signs of frozen foods being thawed. You can generally tell if a product has been time temperature abused, meaning improperly thawed, if there is presence of large ice crystals in the packaging. Always thoroughly check food drive donated and salvaged canned foods for signs of rust, bulging, or severe dents. Dents on the rim of the can are also considered bad. Lastly, never accept home cooked or canned foods. We just never can be certain as to other people's home storage, cooking, and handling procedures. Storage. It is important to always store food a minimum of four inches off the ground and away from the walls at all times. Never leave food on the ground, even in boxes or crates. It's crucial to maintain adequate airflow around dry products. Storing food off the ground lets you keep your pantry clean, and chances of pest infestations will be greatly reduced. This practice will safeguard products from minor flooding that may damage your food. To make sure product doesn't go bad on your shelves, Use the FIFO method, or first in, first out. This is a rotation system where food that has been on the shelves the longest comes to the front for immediate distribution. New products coming into the pantry get placed towards the back of the shelves. Continual rotation of food will allow the oldest products to be moved, but also helps avoid pests from settling on food items. First in, first out. F-I-F-O, FIFO. Delivery. When transporting or delivering perishable items from one location to another, it is recommended that either passive or active refrigeration be used. Products that require refrigeration or freezing, when left at temperatures between 41 and 140 degrees, are considered to be in the temperature danger zone. Products should not be allowed to stay in the temperature danger zone for any long period of time. Active refrigeration is having a truck with a refrigeration device built in. Most agencies don't have this luxury, so it is more common to use passive refrigeration for transporting perishable food. This can be accomplished with a freezer blanket draped over the perishable products or by using coolers. Either way, make sure that products meant to be refrigerated or frozen are kept cold during the delivery process. As a best practice, when picking up product from your local food bank, please remember not to overload your vehicles. Be careful of your weight restrictions on your vehicle and be sure to always tie down loads when using an open bed pickup truck. Temperature control. Refrigerated, frozen, and dry. 
It is important that food is kept at appropriate temperatures to ensure its safety, as well as shelf life. Refrigerators should be kept within a temperature range of 33 to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Food will likely freeze at temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. While temperatures higher than 41 degrees Fahrenheit place foods in the temperature danger zone, where germs can rapidly multiply to the point where someone could get sick. Freezers need to be kept at zero degrees Fahrenheit or below in order to ensure the maximum shelf life of frozen products. It is best to maintain a temperature range of 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit for your dry storage area. Higher temperatures can spoil the food and allow certain pests to hatch. The last thing you want is a pest infestation in your pantry that could cause you to lose much of your inventory. In order to ensure all of these temperatures are properly maintained, temperature logs should be posted and updated weekly. Examples of logs can be attained from your regional food bank. Repack. There are some common do's and don'ts when repacking food on site. Let's start with the do's. When repacking food, please remember these important steps. Setup is crucial to overall food safety of a repack project. Make sure to use tables that can be properly sanitized, preferably stainless steel tabletops. Tabletops need to be washed, rinsed, and then sanitized prior to any repack project in between different products. Always follow proper hand washing procedures and make sure to always use containers that are food grade. Volunteers and staff should wear single use disposable gloves and some sort of hair restraint. No one wants to find a hair in their repacked bag of beans or rice. Lastly, if you are repacking product into smaller packaging, remember to label the new package with product name and list all ingredients. Here are some of the don'ts. Never repack USDA commodities for any reason. Never repack any frozen product that requires thawing to break apart or cut. And never use home tools like a band saw or a radial arm saw to cut frozen products. If you follow these simple do's and don'ts, there should be little problem when it comes to repacking food on site. If you're ever unsure about repacking a particular product, please contact your regional food bank first. Recall procedures. Food recalls do happen, and when they do, it's important that we know how to handle the situation so that potentially dangerous food is not distributed to our clients. It's absolutely essential that you have good product going down the line. So that's my main concern, is hurting somebody, giving bad product out. A lot of the folks that are, we are serving, their health care is not up to par, so we want to make sure that we give them the best quality product that we can. Let's review the procedure for a recall. Each local agency is responsible for appointing a recall coordinator. Your regional food bank will notify the recall coordinator in the case of a product recall. Each regional food bank has a different method of dealing with this. Some have lists of recalled items posted in the warehouse, while others distribute the list directly to you via email. Make sure to check with your regional food bank to see how they handle this. The recall coordinator at the agency will then see to it that recalled product is combined, labeled, and isolated in a designated location. Product will then be placed on hold. The recall coordinator at the local agency will determine how much of the item is on hold and the amount of product already distributed to clients. This information should be submitted to your regional food bank within five days of the recall. If product is to be destroyed, it will be returned to the local regional food bank or to Oregon Food Bank. Local agencies will never be assigned or authorized to destroy product. If you have additional questions or have questions about a specific product, you can always call the manufacturer's 1-800 number found on the packaging. For more information on specific recalls, visit this website or call the toll-free number of the Center for Disease Control and Prevention.